another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm your host, Shay Wheat, founder of Grace and Ease Productions, where we support entrepreneurs just like you with event-based marketing and sales strategies, allowing you to build your authority, your credibility, and your visibility in the industry. And today's guest is somebody pretty amazing. Um, she's not too far from me in the world of the United States, well, not the world of the United States, but in the United States, I should say. Um, and our guest today is Stacy Hall. Now, Stacy has coached thousands of entrepreneurs on how to attract sales, satisfaction, and success. She is a best-selling author, a TEDx presenter, and a leading social media expert. She's also the founder of Success with Stacey Hall and of the groundbreaking social media marketing training program, Go For Yes, which has actually helped thousands of people attract more sales, customers, and employee satisfaction, as well as their success. So you can see why I really wanted her on today to talk about a few different things because we're all about success. Um, right. In her fifth number one book, which is Selling from Your Comfort Zone, The Power of Alignment Marketing. Um, I, I want to go into this, Stacy. So let's just go ahead and just jump on in. Please help me welcome Stacy to the Creating Powerful Impact stage. How are you today? Shay, I am great. I am even better because I get to spend part of the day with you. Yay! Yes. Okay. So just if we were to just start with like your latest book here, Selling from Your Comfort Zone. That in itself seems really kind of counterintuitive because, I mean, I think we're told all the time that we need to get out of our comfort zone uh -huh. in order to sell. So could you share with us, like, what do you mean by this? What does it mean to actually stay in your comfort zone and be making sales? Like, what is the approach? What is your concept? Give us the tea. What is okay. that? Okay. Well, I appreciate you asking, and uh, I am controversial when it comes to this deliberately. So this is where it comes from. First off, there are recent studies that prove sales professionals, more than 55% of them, believe they're selling the wrong thing. Now, how does that happen? If you get a choice of what you want to sell, how do you wind up selling something that you know you're not meant to be selling? Because somebody talked you into it somehow, some way. Okay. In network marketing circles, only 3% of all the billion, there are billions of people representing network marketing companies. Only 3% make more than $200 a year, not a month, a year. Okay. Now, how does that happen? How, how does an industry get a reputation for being so um, we're going to say prosperous, where the vast majority of people are not prosperous at all. It's because of training that tells people both in the corporate world and in the entrepreneurial world that in order to be successful, you have to get outside of your comfort zone. And why? Because once we're outside of who we are, we become dependent on whoever's doing the training. Mm, true. Makes wonderful money for them. Keeps us non-prosperous. Okay. And Shay, I know some of folks right now are already saying that's not true. If I didn't do get out of my comfort zone, I would never have done X. And I'm going to say there's plenty of room to grow inside the comfort zone. I'm going to talk about why the comfort zone is power zone in a moment, if I may. But there's lots of room to grow. And here's an example. I'm not a great swimmer. I almost drowned when I was a kid. And I really wanted to swim. My bucket list items was snorkel in the Great Barrier Reef. And for my 40th birthday, my husband took me to Australia and I snorkeled in the Great Barrier Reef. Now, to do that, I practiced. I had a guide. I stayed close to the boat. So my husband wanted to go deeper. He did. I did it in a safe way. But I can tell you that that was still inside my comfort zone because I wanted to do it. I had the ability to do it. 
But if you had asked me to scuba dive, that would have been outside. There's no, but the, the, the apparatus, it just is like, no, I'm good. Good? Okay. People who say, yes, but I jumped out of an airplane. That was out of my comfort zone. No. People who don't jump out of airplanes, that's out, that's their comfort zone is staying away from jumping out of airplanes. People who jump out of airplanes have something within them that says they want to do that. There, it's is this making sense? So you're saying it it's really defining what is a comfort zone. And what it's defining your comfort zone boundaries and boundaries. Yes. Okay. Now bring it back to selling. Okay. Do you know the vast, vast majority of people are afraid to make offers? Yeah, I see it all the time. Okay. But they're not actually afraid to make offers. They're afraid of being pushy, spammy, persistent, salesy. salesy. That's what they're afraid of. Mm -hmm. Now, where did they get that from? From the training that tells them you have to be that way. So get out of your comfort zone. Hmm. The reason I know they're not afraid to make offers, Shay, to our friends, we recommend movies. We recommend clothing stores. We recommend restaurants. We'll even tell them what they should do in every part of their life, right? If they're a friend, we're not afraid to do that. Right. Okay. Now people will say, yeah, but I'm not asking for money. And it's not even the money. It's that the friendship isn't built. It's that there's no trust doing it their way. So it is extremely scary. Just saying hello to a stranger is scary, let alone asking for money right away. Mm -hmm. So back in our comfort zone is where our values are, where our skill set is, where our experiences are, where what we stand for and what we stand on. And my metaphor for this is the lighthouse. Okay. A lighthouse isn't pushy. It's, it, never, it never is pushy. Searchlight? Very pushy, going into places, looking for things, trying to scope stuff out, right? Lighthouse stands back, knows what it stands on, knows its harbor, what it stands for, has its own markings. Every lighthouse has different marketings. Every lighthouse has a different shape. I mean, they all go up because there has to be a light at the top, but they're all different sizes in terms of their width and their base. And the light is always a different pulsing light. For every lighthouse? For every lighthouse. Really? They have their own signals. And and there's a reason for it. Before there was all the technology we have now, captains of boats had to rely on maps. And on maps, each different lighthouse was drawn so you could match the picture of the lighthouse or... At night, if you couldn't see the lighthouse, the pulse, they knew how to read the pulses of the light, right? That's why. And so I always say, that's just like us. We're unique. We're all, we're all the same. Every coach can pretty much do the same thing, but we do it in our unique way. We may all have different core values or what we say are our top three core values. Our experiences are different. What we stand for could be very different. So there's no competition. And I know what my zone is, just like a lighthouse knows its zone. Right? So there you go. That explains why our comfort zone is actually our power zone. Okay. So would you be able to um, maybe just give us some examples or stories of individuals or businesses that have started to apply, you know, being in this comfort zone approach and then allowing them to achieve those sales results? Absolutely. So I have in my book, I have a lot of role models that I point to. I'll, I'll rather than giving you the full name, I'll just say Stephanie works a full-time job and has a side gig and she loves her full-time job. She's the exception to the rule. She doesn't want to give it up. 
So she, she has a family. She has a full-time job. She has a successful side gig. She manages it all. Be, and she's an introvert. Now, isn't that interesting, right? She wasn't able to have it all when she was following other trainers. That's how she found me. She was following other trainers who told her she had to stop being an introvert. Well, how do you tell an introvert you need to be an extrovert? What's going to happen is they're going to spend all their time trying to be an extrovert instead of actually connecting with people. So when I introduce my alignment marketing formula to her, what we do is we get in alignment with ourselves. Okay? She understands who she is and what she stands for. And she's good with herself. She knows what she sells because she uses it and she knows why she uses it. And she knows who the audience would be that would be very similar to her wanting to use it. And she knows how she likes to make friends. So sometimes she's making friends in person. Sometimes she's making friends online. But she's finding the people that she feels comfortable with. She's not trying to market to the whole world because that would be overwhelming to her. And as a result, she has now built up a reputation as the social media expert for introverts. Okay, That's amazing. she claimed yeah. it. She yeah. does it. Okay, Carla is another person that I point to in the book. And then I'm going to tell you about somebody I just got off the phone with, brand new, and, and where, where she's heading. So Carla is also very successful. She was, she had an audience when we met of fitness instructors. She was a fitness instructor. And she thought that that's who she wanted to support. And she still does to some extent. But she really, really loved learning about the business side of being a fitness expert. And so she started to explore that. And it meant completely shifting her audience to be able to start talking with other women entrepreneurs as she was learning more and more school tools, we'll say, you know, like Canva, AI, funnel building, she, she just really found she loved that even more than being a fitness instructor. So she started connecting with women entrepreneurs who are doing businesses that don't necessarily feel comfortable using the tools. And she's become a fabulous guide to being able to come along on social media marketing tools and has built a name for herself that way as well. And, and yes, she still has a small niche of fitness instructors and it, she's talking to them about business, not about fitness. Does it, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And so I know a lot of our audience is scaling. Um, they're scaling their business. They're going from either just starting out to get to six figures, or they're already at six figures going to multiple six or multiple six to seven. Um, and that's just a lot of a goal of people that listen to our podcast. Yes. Um, and I know, so like if we can kind of pull back the curtain a little bit, um, because, you know, when we're running and producing events, we like to see the behind the scenes and the curtain yes. what's like really going on under the hood. How have you been able to um, scale your business? And are there any like behind the scenes or any strategies or decisions that you've made that's made a, definitely a critical role in the growth of your business you would like to share? Yes, and I, I will go in depth. So if I go too long, just cut me off. <laughs> so I want everyone to know, first off, I had a very successful career before I got ill. And then it took me a long time to build back. So in 2005, I just started, I had a debilitating illness. Doctors, we'll call it extreme adrenal fatigue for one of a better word. And I was in bed for two years and three months. I had to relinquish my business to my business partner who then never did anything with it. Um, and I had to rest for two more than two years. As I started to feel better, 
I I went and got jobs, part-time jobs to be able to bring some money into the house because I couldn't rely on myself to be able to have enough energy to support anyone else. And it took a few years, like five to seven years before I felt that I could really be of support to other people. Again, I didn't need as much attention on me. So I, I want to let everybody know I've had it. I lost it and I had to rebuild it again, or I chose to rebuild it again. And there were, I mean, at times I wasn't sure I'd ever be able to rebuild anything again. So when I started back helping people, the first thing I did is I partnered. Now that's easier for somebody who had success because I came back and said, I'm back. And people knew who I was, right? That's if you're brand new, you can't really do that. But I would say do it as quick as you can. And one way is to get yourself on podcasts and start meeting people who want to meet people. And if you've got a message, then use podcasts, which are no charge usually. In fact, I, I only appear on no charge podcasts, not because I can't afford it, but I'd like to support people who are really being very generous. And, and share with them. So I'm saying get on our podcast and get your message out there. But the next thing that I did, so I collaborated. I started participating in some summits. I'm sure everybody knows what summits are to get my message out there and to network with other people to collaborate. So one of the things that I hear people complain about all the time is they don't get a lot of exposure or a lot of leads from summits. Okay. Well, it's the same thing. If you try to do a trade show, if anybody's ever participated in an online fair or an online vendor event, you're not going to get people coming through. Where are you going to make your connections is with the other vendors and with the other presenters. And to start co-creating together so that your audience gets more value, which is what a podcast is. Right now, Shay and I are co-creating value for her audience and mine. Okay, so these are some ways that I got back in very quickly, but others can do the same starting from scratch. The next step is to be really, really clear that you must build your audience every day. So if that yeah. means, I mean, every day, every there, there day. is so important. Yes. And some people sit back and they're like, well, I, I sent out 10 friend requests this week. Really? How about 10 a day? Okay. And how many of those people are responding to you? And mm -hmm. are you getting in the lab and figuring out what you have to tweak to get more people to say, yeah, I, I want to be friends with this person. We've got to create content every day that's of interest to our audience. And we have to, I say, we do have to be in lots of places at the same time, but not lots of places in the same time with different content. Repurposing Which, the same content. Over and over again. Yeah. Post on page, post in group, post in via email, post in story, post on reel, okay? That's what we must do so we are everywhere all the time so people get to see us because we don't know who's watching, okay? I just had this conversation with somebody who's just starting out and I said, you've got to go slow in order to go fast later. What most people- I mean, Building that foundation, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, I mean, I've, I've heard you say, so one, you're getting on other people's stages, right? So in my five stages of events to scale and leverage guide, it's like, you've hit it spot on. First, you work on you, right? Get clients, get them crazy, ask for results, then get on other people's stages, other people's summits, other people's podcasts, and then start networking and getting out there and then eventually create your own stages. That's exactly okay? it. Yeah. Once the audience is big enough, then you can create your own. Yes. I love it. I love it. Spot on. We're in alignment with it. Yes. My favorite <laughs> word in the whole wide 
world alignment. Yeah. Yes. Well, and it, it really does come down to networking and connecting with people. And it's like, okay, how can I support you and vice versa and finding those partnerships and stage trades and doing like, uh, you go on to somebody's masterclass and they come on and do a masterclass for your audience or a Facebook swap or something along those lines, right? So then it's a win-win of partners that aren't doing the same thing you're doing, but can still support your audience and vice versa. And vice versa. So I, I've got a launch coming up and I've got folks who have had me in their events. It's not a summit. I'm actually putting together my course and... I've got lots of bonuses. So uh, there's bonuses that I'm providing. But I have 18 people who have all had me over the last four years participate in their events. And I'm saying, hey, I would love to give you exposure in mine. And it's for, I, I really don't like the, the win-win part. And I do love collaboration. That's my favorite word. So they're collaborating with giving me a lead magnet. So my audience is getting a gift. They're getting more exposure. My course becomes that much more valuable. I love that. And and so we're all supporting each other one way, shape, or form. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So thank you for kind of showing us some behind the scenes of like how you're continuing to grow and scale your business while also being in collaboration with others. Because that's why we're doing the podcast. It's like, how are we going to go ahead and create even more impact in the world to get today with each other? So yes. as we start to kind of wrap up here, um, I would love for you to share with our listeners, like how can they connect with you? How can they learn more about what you've got going on? And do you happen to have a gift for our audience today? Um, well, of course I have a gift. So let me just get that out there right away. It's called Eight Steps to a Sale. I recorded, it's about 45 minutes, and I actually provide the specific instruction on how to go from starting out, if you really don't know what you're meant to be selling, my very first step will help you figure that out, and then all the way through the steps that have to be in place to get to the point where you can make an offer, and I even give you training on how to make an offer that will get accepted in 15 minutes or less. Like, like that's the guarantee. If you put every step in leading up to it, the eighth step is, here's how you get somebody on a Zoom or on a call. You go through this process and there's no script. It's a process. You have to plug in your own parts of that pro process. But People are likely to say yes to your offer at the end of a 15 minute chat that way. So okay. that's what I call go for yes. So oh, being I a lighthouse it. and that's... expecting people to say yes to you. Oh, I love it. That's so fun. And not very many people will give a guarantee. So, you know, she's got something going on. If she's guaranteeing, it's going to happen, right? Well, I'm and saying it is free. It and if you don't get value out of it, return it back to me. <laughs> but truly, I've been sharing this for, for many, many years. And if you long, blah, 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 blah. if you download Eight Steps to a Sale, of course, you'll get on my email list. So we'll be in touch. But more than that, if you go to my website, is Stacy S T A C E Y A N N Hall H A L L Stacy Ann Hall dot com. All my social links are there on the first page at the bottom. But information about my books and my other courses and just about All me. Ways. So that's the place to connect. Beautiful. Thank you for that. We will have the link in the show notes. Last question for you. What is a takeaway or a memorable note you'd like to leave our audience with today? That if you've spent more time struggling to get out of your comfort zone than you have spent meeting new people, building your audience, engaging with that audience, and making offers to that audience, then you know that there's time for a shift here. That's the difference. Either you're doing business or you're working on yourself. And people will say, my business growth won't happen any faster than my personal growth. I, 
I used to be one of those people, Shay. What I say now is, you know, once you know what there is to work on, okay, but you don't have to hold up your business while you get yourself right with yourself. There are certain things, if you know your core values, if you know your strengths, if you know how you want to serve the world, go do that in your spare time. Deal with other stuff has to be dealt with. Awesome. I love it. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you You're for welcome. being with us today. And I want to thank our audience for joining us on another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm excited for you to take all of these lessons, these resources that you've learned here today, start implementing them and create even more impact in your world. Until next time, have an outstanding rest of your day. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Creating Powerful Impact podcast. If you are a successful coach, speaker, author, or thought leader who would like to be on this program, simply visit creatingpowerfulimpact.com forward slash guest. If you are someone who got something out of this interview, would you please do me a favor and share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on your socials. Also, if you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag creating powerful impact. I love seeing all of your posts and great guest selections. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content to make sure you don't miss any episodes. Go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and they really mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more about us? Head on over to our website, graceandeaseproductions.com or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. Just look for Grace and Ease Productions on your favorite platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.